Thank you so much for being here to discuss such an important, timely topic, uh, and one that I do actually believe impacts every single one of us. <clears throat> what I'm going to do very briefly in the presentation today is to go over what is Islamophobia. When we say that, what do we mean? Why is there so much of it these days? And then how does it impact society in general? So I define Islamophobia as basically anti-Muslim bigotry perpetrated or, or fueled by an irrational fear of Islam. So it's different than simply criticizing the faith, asking questions about the faith. None of that is Islamophobia. Islamophobia is really about anti-Muslim bigotry. Now, why is there so much of it? And most of the time when I ask this question, even of Muslim audiences, they say, well, 9-11. 9-11 was the turning point where we saw a surge in Islamophobia. And the answer is no, that's actually not what happened. Um, that's what I believed until I looked at the data. When you actually look at opinion, American public opinion of American Muslims, and you compare American public opinion right before 9-11, right after, the horrific terrorist attacks, you actually see a slight improvement in American opinion of Muslim Americans. So just simply blaming this horrific terrorist act is, is not going to give us our answers. I actually looked even more broadly at, at domestic terrorist attacks perpetrated by Muslims in general and found, again, over not just once, but over the past 13, 14, 15 years, that domestic terrorist attacks carried out by Muslims did not correlate with a spike in anti-Muslim sentiment. Interestingly, what does correlate with a spike in negative perceptions of Muslims and Islam are not terrorist attacks, but elections. As well as the run-up to the Iraq War. So Islamophobia is not simply the regrettable, natural response to bad Muslims doing bad things. It is also a tool of public manipulation. And that's why I think it's so important for us to understand. There's also an Islamophobic an industry, it's an actual industry that produces fear. Between 2008 and 2013, think tanks or pseudo think tanks, pseudo experts and um, anti-Muslim bloggers had access to more than $200 million to churn out fear material against Muslims and Islam. <laughs> And then the third reason that there's so much Islamophobia is because of a biased media. Now, I know this sounds cliche, and I know everyone hears this, oh, the media is biased. Well, this isn't just an impression people have. It's actually empirical data. So a, a firm uh, based in Germany called Media Tenor now, they do all kinds of media content analysis, mostly for corporations, because they actually found by analyzing media about a company, they can predict its stock price. So that's, that's their business model, right? It's that, it's that connected. So they've been tracking um, media on Muslims and Islam as well as on other faiths in, in US news media. And what they found is that in 2014, 80% of news about Islam and Muslims was negative. Now this is news, this isn't editorials, this isn't uh, talk shows, this is just news. News that's supposed to be neutral, 80% of it in tone is negative. For reference, 73% of news about North Korea is negative, okay? So just kind of take that in. Another study found that the New York Times, so we're going to be hearing from the New York Times very soon. But the New York Times, over the past 25 years, has portrayed Islam more negatively than cancer and cocaine. So the media is biased. So with this kind of a media bias, empirically, Americans are literally being fed fear day in and day out. 
what is the impact of this on, on, our, on our society? It makes us less free and it makes us less safe. First, the obvious makes us, uh, makes Muslim Americans experience, you know, greater uh, discrimination. So in a recent poll conducted by ISPU, we looked at reported, self-reported, uh, religiously based discrimination across different faith groups in America, and Muslims were by far the most likely to report um, discrimination because of their faith, with nearly one in five saying that they experience it regularly. Now, within the Muslim community, those that are most vulnerable to discrimination are women, young people, and people without a college education. So it's actually the most vulnerable within the community that is most impacted. But it doesn't stop at Muslims. This is what I hope you remember from my presentation. Anti-Muslim bigotry, Islamophobia, impacts every single American. For example, there is an empirical link between anti-Muslim bigotry or Islamophobia and anti-Semitism. In one study, we found, this just blew me away, the variable most strongly linked to self-reported prejudice toward Muslims was self-reported prejudice against Jews. If someone said that they had anti-Jewish prejudice, this was all self-reported, they were 32 times as likely to also report anti-Muslim sentiment, and it was the strongest predictor of any variable we looked at, stronger than any demographic variable, stronger than whether or not they knew a Muslim, stronger than their education or their political affiliation. There's also an overlap between anti-Muslim sentiment or anti-Muslim legislation in this case and legislation that restricts the rights of several other minority groups. In fact, there was an 80% overlap in a study that we conducted between lawmakers that were proposing anti-Muslim uh, legislation and ones that were, and, and the same people were proposing legislation that impacted the rights of um, African Americans and Latinos, of, of labor unions, immigrants, the gay community, and, um, and women. But if you're not a member of any of those groups, does it matter? The answer is yes, yes, yes. If you care about freedom, then it matters to you because on a neurological level, fear makes us more accepting of authoritarianism conformity, and prejudice. Three things that erode the foundation of our democracy. Fear kills freedom. But it also makes us less safe. So this, this false dichotomy between freedom and safety is, is not, uh, it doesn't stand up to evidence. It, Islamophobia makes us less safe as well. The obvious is that there is a link between Islamophobic rhetoric and anti-Muslim hate crimes or hate crimes against people perceived to be Muslim. So that's one way that it makes people less safe. But it's not the only way. It also strengthens terrorist rhetoric. So for example, this is a screenshot of a propaganda video put out by a uh, a, um, a branch of Al-Qaeda, where a clip from one of our presidential candidates was used in a propaganda video to recruit terrorists by using this, this clip to show that America is inherently anti-Muslim. So to, to sum up, Islamophobia is, is toxic, it's toxic for everyone. Muslims are simply the canaries in the coal mine. They're the first to be impacted, but it's an indication that the climate is dangerous for everyone. Thank you.